he had a reputation. When I was introduced to him, you know, people would say to me afterwards, you know, he's been in some Everything from counterintelligence uh, initiatives uh, to recruiting of sources inside the uh, Iraqi forces who could alert us to, to potential problems. And he became one of our first serious intel sources within the ministry. You were just confused. You had so many terrorist groups that was operating to take power of the Iraqi MOD. And on top of that, you are not just fighting them, you are also fighting for the U.S. interests in this conflict. There were 53 dead civilian bodies due to violence every 24 hours in Baghdad alone. That's just in the nation's capital. Uh, so you can imagine how difficult the situation was. We've got this solid information. This guy's in a, in a, great, in a great spot. He's got people you can rely on to, to feed him the good information. And you can basically walk down the street and talk to him. And every secret the U.S. intelligence learned about, it was putting their plans behind. We had sources of information that were golden, that kept the JSOC teams, that kept MNFI and 3rd Infantry Division in a target-rich environment for a year. And all we really knew at the time was there's bad guys in the building. Some of them we think are aligned and affiliated with Group X. Uh, others we think are aligned um, with, you know, Group Y and Z. Uh, you know, the bad guys know who you are. They reach out to you. They contact you. Hey, we're going to kill your family if you don't quit. I'm not quitting. One of the key reasons his life was not just on the line, but forfeit. We knew there were standing kill orders on him.